This right here is the Harvey One TE. I didn't even practice. I, I just have like, man, that's crazy faith right there. And I just dropped straight into a 45, like just dropping straight down at 45 degrees into a full slot, full depth, and then pop out, come on the side and just murder it. It's a poor HSK 63 DMU. That was a crazy, that was a crazy cut. People literally freak out. Shop owners are like telling the machine, the machinists are bringing this thing to them and they're like, he doesn't know manufacturing and like, that's not real. And it's like, dude, I'm trying to make you money and inspire your machinists. Am I saying do that? No. But you're doing 5% of it. I'm showing you that it's possible. And if you change your mindset and you understand that it's possible that that machine right there could, that poor little HSK 63 had nowhere to go. And it was, it was like trying to like leave, but it had nowhere to go. And it just pushed right through. The tool didn't break. The tool didn't break. So I'm trying to like open your mind that if you're running here, what if you doubled it? What if you tripled it? What would that mean for the overall runtime on the part? It's a mindset. Nobody opens the door to show you what people have been using for decades. So we actually brought in two Hellers two different styles into our shop. We just did a whole cell because I want to teach how to do fundamentals and teach the kids and teach machinists. We have 175,000 active students on our academy right now. More than half are machinists. Actually just trying to learn five axes or learn, like get better. But I want to teach all of it, but I also want to teach U.S. manufacturers how to bring jobs back, how to palletize, how to use the right type of drills. People are freaking out when I used to go 800 inches a minute, you know what I mean? And then it's like, this video, you're going 1600 inches a minute, and on the straightaway, it actually reaches it. A lot of times, you're so confined, you can't go. You, you're at 100 inches a minute, you're crying because I'm at 800 inches a minute. If you went to 400 inches a minute, that's four times your productivity. It's a mindset. You can say what you want, but it did it easily with no pressure on the machine. All machines are not created equal. Each one has power and a different torque, you know, graph and all that, you know, so you have to understand what type of spindle connection you have and all that, but it's possible. Especially when you look at these big aerospace companies running 70, 50, like just big structure parts and stuff. There's so much you can do where, you, I mean, you, you can draw days off these parts, running the right tools with the right fixturing and getting after it. And I believe that a great machinist can run on almost anything. You gotta chase that tolerance and it sucks, but you, you can run on almost anything. You know, people would be like, you're running, I, I run at 800 inches, I got a, you know, VF2 SS and I used to run at 800 inches a minute. I made it my standard to just run fast and, and I would educate my, the people that I was doing work for where everybody else ran, where I ran, and therefore that's why I can actually come in with these lesser prices and everybody's scared to come over here and stuff. Haas is a lower level, you know, machine tool that has its place in the industry, right? But at the same time, you know, that mentality right there is, is everything because people used to freak out. But I'm like, you know what? I don't care if I break a spindle. I don't care because in three years, if I break a spindle or, or my ways or something happens, it doesn't matter. I would have made so much money. I would have got so many contracts and the spindles are $6,000 and they give you back three grand. So it's basically three grand for a spindle. So if I wanna make all of this money, like stop worrying about the spindle. It's a machine that's gonna take care of your family. It's a mindset. These Hellers, they run at crazy horsepower, like all the machines. If you're in that top level with Makino and DMG Mori and Okuma, and so, they're all good machines. You know what I mean? You're not gonna break it. These machine tools are capable of ama amazing things, but you have to have the mindset to actually run them.
if I could say one thing, like the most important thing right here, you can get machines, you can get tools, you can get all these things, but you have to have the mental attitude. You have to have the mentality to be great in this industry. And then the road is all wide open. Today, I've gone all over the world. I've seen incredible shops. I've seen beautiful shops and beautiful people, but I've never, I've never seen a shop that actually has it dial the most money you can even comprehend i've never seen a great truly great machine shop and what does that mean does that mean that like i'm being mean to people no that means that there is opportunity for the right shops right now because there's a million vendors that are not being taken care of the way they would like to be taken care of they're not being taken care of in a way that you know, they would never go with somebody else. That might be the best that they've ever seen, but that does not mean that there can't be something new that comes up that blows their minds. So there's so much opportunity. But when you look at this industry, it's unlike anything else. You can look at all these different industries, they're limited. In this industry, you go to IMTS and you see all these machine tool builders and they're just a fraction of what's out there. And you think all of these machines, where do they go? There's so many different companies. And then there's companies like your companies all over this globe that are making products in secret. And it's such a massive industry. You have so many tools. Then you go to work holding. Then you go to all these different things. It's like there's so many variables that somebody who can sit in the pocket and understand what is the most efficient and use it to actually make money for their company, those are the ones that actually thrive. And very few figure it out. When I look at machining, I look at the machine tool, the connection for the spindle, I look at the tooling, I look at the work holding, I look at the coolant, I look at all these different things. And as a programmer and shop owner, I want to like take each one to its highest level to have them and then push it hard to actually make that money. So when you look at a machine shop and you look at a production facility, and if you are an owner of a machine shop, I might just snap a picture of this real quick. What do I have first on the, on the left side? I have vision. Because as I explained to you, everything I've ever done, I've always been able to sell that vision. I've ever been able to speak that into existence. There's like aerospace companies and, and different things. You have crazy aerospace companies like SpaceX that are just so far out there. You have, you know, Blue Origin, you know, which is like more secretive, but like doing crazy things. Each one needs machinists and each one has a machine shop. So they have to think big picture, not just you can't just get great machinists and expect to have a great culture and, and all of it. So you have an amazing company, you gotta have that crazy vision. And then you have to build an amazing shop. Having amazing machines not, is not good enough. Like you have to take care of your employees, especially in this day and age. Give them a vision, give them a reason to come to work. When they come to work, give them the right tools, the right machines, the right mentality, talent. Everybody wants to be a great machinist. But you gotta put the work in. You, you gotta have the talent. You have to have a company that breeds it. One of the best things that any company can do, instead of getting rid of their old machine or instead of only focusing on these machines, like if I was blue or I was one of those big companies, you take another room, you don't care about making money, you put multiple machines in here and a few times a month or however, after work, whatever, you make it available for the machinist and you have somebody in charge and you test tools. If you do that and you have a testing facility in your own place, if you allow them, the machinist, to go and program their Titan parts online and figure out five axes and say, hey, no matter where you are in this company, there's a way to move forward. Here's, here's the levels and look, we have machines dedicated to you to actually run and this person will make sure it's safe for you, but you have a testing facility then any machinist that walks in is like, I'm just a button pusher. They're like, hey, I'm gonna be like Titan used to be and put the extra hours in after work. I'm gonna go over here and like mess with the machines and, and actually figure some stuff out. If you guys have these programs that have been running for 20 years and you have this crazy roughing thing and you don't wanna change it, take new tools, basically do the same thing, do it over here, 
with everyone and have fun and document it and then take the changes and then apply them. You don't have to just make the changes, but if you build this little testing thing, it would be amazing for you guys' team and machinists would love it. Education. I already pretty much talked about education, but like educating your people, making sure that they know if they're making $30 an hour, here's how you make 40. Here's how you make 50. These are the things that you need to do. This is the roadmap. You can make more money at McDonald's than more machine shops on the entry level. It's just an absolute fact. And there's a million machinists there. They talk crap online about the industry and stuff. But I always say like, hey, if you can be a pillar and make people money, you'll actually make money. You know, and, and I really fight that, but it's true because there's a lot of companies that are just not making money and they're just paying how they always paid. If you have a vision and you have the culture and you have the talent and you breed it for success, then, then the salary, you know, all of it, the education, it all works itself out. Documentation, I'm sure everybody here is like huge on documentation, like AS9100, like just having the right stuff is, everything for me like one another another thing for small shops you hire these machinists they all come in they have their experiences their know-how they program how they program work how they work and one day they leave how do we take their experience and bring it to the company for company experience if i run 400 500 surface foot on a six fluid and my chip loads at point you know zero zero four three to four seven whatever like if that's how i run and other people are in the machinist handbook and saying oh 175 surface foot and they're running at like two thou per you know what i mean why is that guy running here and this guy's running over here let's make it a standard for the shop and say who's the best who has the best proven technique and then let's make that a standard for the shop that when you run this drill or this end mill or this or that it runs in in this material it runs here and this material it runs here documentation man you just load it up i guess that goes along with process standards you know it's not just a standard of how to make something how to machine something from getting material to shipping apart standards of like how to actually machine and the particular tools and the know-how and the education. So whoever is the best guy, the young guys and medium guys come into the company and they're equal to not in years and stature, but they're equal to the knowledge of what he has. And people fail at that. What is the best? I used to always stand here and I say, Hey, I just quoted this job from, whatever spacex blue somebody and i'm like it's it's crazy this is how i believe we should do it this is how we're going to fixture it this is how we're going to game plan it boom 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 is there a better way yes. is there a better who's i'm using this tool this tool this tool this tool this tool is there a better way you know what i mean and then if there is let's actually let's put that into place but once we make a decision then it's law but at the same time, I'm going to have an obsession for perfection and I'm going to constantly look at it for years and years and years and know that we're not the best. There has to be a better way to do it. So every single thing up here, there has to be a better way to do it. Inspection is above programming because inspection, you can have the whatever, you can have the best productivity, best machine, best everything. But if it doesn't meet inspection, you don't have a way to inspect it. If your machinists don't have an inspection mindset, then why even make a part? Programming, you have a million programmers. They all run the same tools, all run the same programs. Their times will all be different based on their experience. So how can we look at pro programming is everything. It's, it's everything because you can go into these shops like you, no offense Boeing, but like you can go in there and depending on where those guys are, and when they made the tool pass and when all that and how long it's been running, you can have somebody else and just their mindset and experience and the tools and what, how they think of it, because that's the cool thing about programming. It's everybody's different. They can come in and just like drop the time by 30%, most of the time easy. Almost every single job everybody runs here, you can decrease the time and still have tool life and make more money on. I guarantee it. If I stood at anybody's shop and looked at any part, 
I guarantee you there's a way that you can actually decrease the time and efficiency and there's so many variables to look at. So have the mindset to understand that we're not the best, but we need to go after it. And even when you make the changes, understand that there's still room to go. Work holding, rigidity, machine tools, I already talked about that, tooling. Kenneman has 60,000 you know, SKUs. I use the ones that I truly believe in. Like that's one thing that's super important to me, like with just the community and people trust me and stuff. It's like, I'm gonna put out stuff that I know is gonna make people money. I'm gonna bring in, com people were like surprised when I went to Doosan, but I was like, you know what, Doosan, I'm not saying it's better than DMG Mori, but, I'm, but it's 30% less expensive. So for a lot of you guys, it's a great machine. Right. Everything that I do, I, I really focus on the community and doing doing it you know right and stuff you know but it's like there are other tool great tool companies and stuff i was running this crazy part like with all this surfacing and all this and it was ink and l 718 and they're like customer supplied but it went through an extra hardening like 718 is already hard but it went through an extra hardening like process solution like whatever whatever like i was just like oh my god this thing is crazy and like i'm just like i'm just tearing tools up man tearing tools up my I, I was actually like over here you know speaking somewhere and then my guy's like hey that program you made like we're breaking tools and this and this and i'm like hey try this try this try this the best we could everybody's giving us free tools and it's like this is before i was fully doing what i do now and it's like 20 minutes you know 50 minutes 90 minutes best scenario and and the thing takes over a full day to rough and I'm like literally stressed because like I'm paying for these tools and stuff. Danny actually at that point gave me the, the Harvey three and I ran, put it in, ran it same speed, same feeds, and it lasted for seven hours. And that's when I switched over like, and I started like showing people. I did like a thing, like it was all chipped up and stuff. And you know, Ken Amendo's names, they, I don't know why they didn't change their name, but it was all chipped up. and. But we kept running it. We're just running, we're like we're roughing, you know? So it had all chips all over. We didn't take it out. We just kept, it kept running for hours afterwards and stuff. And then I did a thing on my cell phone and I was like, I was like, ah, oh, like it's like, this thing won't die. It's like got chipped and it's like this and this, but it's like, it's like a, it's a zombie mill. Put it out there and they were getting calls from all over the world. Everybody wants the zombie mill, which is pretty cool. It's the power of social media, you know?